It is time. Do you know the way, my brother? Do you know the way? Do you know the way, my brother? We shall find. Oh no, that's not the way. This is the way. No. No. This the way. No, that's not the way. That is the way, my brother. All right, what's going on, you guys? It's your boy Three Stacks in this thing, baby. As promised to, I've actually one individual subscriber. <laughs> Which is, um, it's hard to do these, the individual requests, because it's like, dude, there's too many people asking for too many decks and too much updates and too much duels and too much test hands and too much combos and too much this, that, and the third for me to just fulfill the request of an individual. Um, but I try to be a man of my word, and because it's in the realm of possibility, since I do have the cards, I figured, why not? And, you know, it's always nice to make that person sp feel special. Um, and it's not a preferential, biased favoritism or any kind of treatment like that. It's just uh, whenever I get the chance, I like to make my subs feel special, even if it's singling someone out out of the thousands, you know. So um, this was definitely um, possible, and that's the main reason why I'm even doing it. But what I have for you guys today is my take on how I personally play Yosin Juice. Now, uh, I'm always going to say this in every profile. Just approach this with an open mind. He, just always remember, everybody plays their deck differently, and I'm always going to play my deck how I want to. I'm never going to let anybody tell me how to play my deck, and I'm never going to change it up because of someone else's opinion. So, this list is actually a, it's a 60-card Yosinji deck. I really love it. I've been playing it a lot. You guys saw it in action in my live stream. I had live duels for like two or three hours. So, it's proven that it's worked. Um, I broke literally an entire established Orcus um, Guard Dragon board with the uh, Gamma Seal. It had Gamma Seal. With the field spell loaded with five counters, it had Galatea, Crescendo, Dean Girsu, and it also had the um, Hot Red or Dragon Archfiend. It was actually pretty simple. It wasn't that hard. Um, I used the um, Yosinju's um, Sword Sting, and then... Well, no, that's what I did. I activated Lost Wind to try to bait and negate. You used chained the Yosinju Sword Sting, and then I chained uh, Solemn Strike. And then I just, like, the entire board just got cleaned up. So, yeah. I mean, the deck is pretty strong. It's good at going first or second. That's what I like. It's not one of those dice roll decks. It can do both. Um, it has a very powerful um, recovery game. It has a really strong resource game. And it has this kind of cascading snowball effect where it can start off with low resources and just start building them up really quickly. Um, just every time you drop your Sinju, like a comma three, for example, and it replaces itself with a card and goes back to your hand at the end phase, that's a plus one every turn, and you're drawing for turn. It's like you can really out resource a lot of decks. You can grind them out, you can OTK them. You can that's the beauty of this deck too that makes it so much more enjoyable. It's like any given time, if I don't feel like dealing with the bullcrap, I can just kill you. Like I can just kill my opponent. They just die. Like this deck is so crazy. Uh, I really like it a lot. It's pretty aggro. But at the same time, I made it defensive on purpose so that I didn't just lose to cheesy hand traps and a bunch of bull crap like that. Where I'd have my defensive layer in my back row and my aggression comes from my comma swarming the field and killing cards. It's really fun. So 60 card Yosinjus, let's go. These are the OG Yosinjus. These are not the new support that we got, but uh, we got three of each comma. They're still the best Yosinjus um, in the main deck. You know, you, I play Shinchu L and R because I also play a little bit of a pendulum base in this deck as well. Um, but comma one, if you guys are not cognizant of what these cards do, they're pretty old school. Um, just look them up. Um, but I really like comma one specifically because I'm um, like, well, comma three is hard once per turn. You can only use this once per turn. And obviously, you can just like attack directly as much as you want. Comma one is once while it's face up on the field, which means face up on the field is different from hard once per turn. It's like wind up magician, where basically you can um, actually use multiple comma ones if you want or if you get comma one to resolve and find some way to bring it back onto the field you can use it again but the point is like when you have multiple commas you get to bounce multiple cards which is really cool that it doesn't destroy it doesn't care about ding gear suit and this deck can really break orcas boards really quickly and the point is like when you go second you're trying to break your opponent's board or pick it apart wither it down and then use your your sword sting and your secret moves and your counter traps and your torrentials and your lost wins and all that good stuff, your crackdowns to finish your boards, your opponent's board off. And even if you can't break it down, if you can wither it to the point where your opponent's resources are not sufficient enough to kill you, you can kill them. Um, so it's kind of like the keep you from killing me so that I can kill you thing. Um, but yeah, we have three of each comma. Comma three is broken, you guys. Seriously, it's it literally searches a negation or a disruption. It's so good. 
Um, I played three copies of Sabu because I like the pendulums. Even if I don't pendulum summon, the fact that Shinju L just can protect my board. And also the fact that whenever I need to, I can pin summon one of my Yosinju so that my secret moves live. Because yes, I play some of the Yosinju cards that people never really thought to play. Even back in the day when Yosinju ciphering was popular and Yosinjus were possible, pop, uh, pop, popular, nobody played the Yosinju counter traps. Nobody played training grounds. Nobody played the other Yosinju cards because they always said they were bad. That's the thing I would always hear all the time, every time. And I'm like... How the heck do you know if something's bad if you've never tried it? That doesn't make sense to me. But we got three copies of Sabu. Um, Sabu is kind of like a plus one because I also play Whirlwind. I like, like I play all the quote quote bad Yosinju cards, right? They're actually broken. They're really good. This card is so it's such a pain in the neck to deal with. Uh, yeah, so Sabu is pretty nuts. Um, I just like his body. I like his event, the advantage he gets every time he gets summoned. He also just nets me an advantage. So when you're going like one, two, three, and then Sabu. Uh, Sabu searches, three searches, and then your Yosin training ground searches. So when you establish Yosin training ground and you uh, drop a comma, one, and then a three, and then a Sabu, you actually get three searches. You get a search off Sabu, you get a search off three, and then you get a search off training grounds. So I can set up double counter trap or I can set up counter trap plus sword sting, which is actually nuts. Because when you're going second, counter trap plus sword sting still breaks boards. But you can just activate sword sting, bounce a couple cards, and they chain effect and a gate. Chain a counter trap, you know, if you're playing, you know, the deck that doesn't doesn't have a counter trap, they can just play from their hand or something like that. You pretty much just broke their board for free. I mean, Torrential Strike is still it's still a thing, too. So, yeah. Continue with the Yosinjus. I also play two copies of Izna. This is kind of like a pseudo Magical Meltdown slash Miscellaneous Source-esque effect. It's like a hand trap. You can discard it, and your opponent can't respond to your summons. That's beautiful, because if one normal summon resolves... Sometimes that's all you need. It can really just be the, the death of your opponent. He has another cool effect, too. He can draw cards. I like him a lot. Just as a two-of, though. Um, and then these are the Yosinju cards that also nobody really likes to play. I'm not saying that everybody in the face of the universe doesn't, but a lot of Yosinju players don't. Um, and I think you guys should consider the Shinchus. Um, they actually give more value to the Orochi channeling if you want to play channeling, because you don't have to play channeling if you don't play pendulums. Um, they allow you to, like I said, set up your secret move. And also, when your normal summon gets interrupted, you can uh, just activate Orochi Channeling, put two scales, and then pin summon out your Yosinjus, and you can kill your opponent anyways. So just keep in mind that that's actually a possibility, and they get, this card protects your Yosinjus. I also play one copy of Diebot because this card's insane. This Pillum Summon can't be negated. So because this card's Pillum Summon can't be negated, if I am not mistaken, again, somebody's going to correct me if I'm wrong anyways, if I'm not mistaken, when you Pendulum Summon him alongside other Yosinjus, because his Pendulum Summon can't be negated, you can't negate the Summon of those other Yosinjus either. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It doesn't matter. Whatever. But Daibok is a Pendulum Summon still can't be negated. And his effect happens on Summon, which is pretty powerful. So it's very hard to play around him. He just breaks boards, and he's a 3k beater. Uh, when you have him in scale, all your Yosinjus, not once per turn, not once per turn, not once per turn, you just declare an attack boost, declare an attack boost, declare an attack boost, declare an attack boost. Every one of your combos will get a 300 surplus in addition to whatever you get from Tinkies. And on top of that, Yosinju Training Grounds can give them a boost too. Yosinju Training Ground can boost them by 300. This can boost them by 300. So you'll have, like, for example, a comma 1 that's at 2200. Like, that's pretty big, you know? Um, so that's it for the Yosinju Monsters. No, I don't play hand traps. Y'all want to play hand traps? Do you, baby. Do you. To each his own. Live your life. Don't ever let nobody stop you. Uh, so for the spells, I play three copies of Training Ground. This is my favorite spell. This keeps you in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, personally, this is my favorite Yosinju card in the entire deck. My favorite Yosinju spell. Um, this card helps you to grind, to outlast your opponent. It adds from deck or graveyard to hand. So if you're under a Colossus, you can actually use it to just add cards from grave to hand instead. This also helps me to keep certain counter traps alive. Because I have some spice in here for you guys that y'all are going to never, have, ever expect. Like, I did research. Nobody even plays the spice that I'm about to show you guys. Nobody does. People weren't even thinking about it. People forgot about it. And even the deck that it belongs to, that deck didn't even play it. So I know nobody was playing it. Uh, but we have three copies of Training Ground. The card's insane. It's uh, basically going to search any Yosinju card from deck or grave to hand. And it can boost all your Yosinjus. You get a Yosin counter every time you know more, especially Yosinjus. Um, and that's really easy to load this up. You load it up with three pretty much every turn, which means every turn, you're getting a search off this, you're getting a search off three, you're getting a search off Sabu. That's why I was saying, like, the resources. Because think of it, you draw for turn, so every turn you get four cards to your hand. The draw for turn, the search, the search, and then the, also the search off of uh, the Sabu. And if you have Izna in rotation, you get a draw. So you actually get five cards every single turn. Because they go back to your hand. When they're normal summon, they go right back to your hand. So you normal summon, normal summon, normal summon, normal summon, get five cards to hand. Attack, attack, bounce, do your thing. In phase, they go back. Five cards! Five cards! Five! 
I'm sorry if that's not broken. I don't know what broken is. Like, that's insane that you can do that. That's what I was talking about with the resource game of this deck. We have three copies of Tenki. It searches out all of your Yosinjus except for Shinchu, L, and R, and also Daibok. Even if his level was low enough, he's not a Beast Warrior. Um, and then I played three copies of Pot. It's a 60-card deck, and I played three of everything that matters. I haven't had a situation where Pot banished three of anything ever, and this is one of my favorite cards. I love it in any deck I could play it. Um, I played two Orochi Channeling, even though it's not once per turn, and your opponent can ash it and you can play another one. It's kind of one of those cards that I prefer to search out when I need. I don't always like starting out with this, especially when my hand is not adequate, because it's like a fine wine. It has to pair with certain cards, and if it doesn't have the cards that it pairs with, it's kind of just one of those Ash Blossom Baits or an active starter sometimes going second when you need to go aggro. Like, you can just play this, you know, drop the scales. This is one card that gets you two scales, so that's a plus two, essentially, for me personally. I feel like that's a plus two. Um, you can call it a plus one, but I feel like that's a plus two. It's really insane. Um, but yeah, it gets you complete scales, and you can just pin some in your hand and kill your opponent. I play one Wind Worship. Um, I just feel like the card is correct at one. You can add it from your graveyard to hand with your Sinju Training Ground, so this also helps it so I don't have to play more. But the card lets you draw until you have five cards in your hand. So if you have one card in hand, and this was the one card you had, you activate it, and you go from one to five. So yeah, if that's not broken, I don't know what broken is. One Whirlwind. Uh, whenever your, uh, your Sinju is returned to the hand, you basically uh, get to bounce a card on the field. And you also have to pay 800 life points to activate it, but that's nothing. Um, so that's it for the spells. Now, you guys know it's a 60-card deck, so you saw pretty much half of my deck. So you're going to see all the traps I play. I don't play any Floodgates. I don't like Floodgates. I'm not a Floodgate player. I like Reactive as opposed to Proactive. If I ever play Floodgates, I probably play Bare Minimum, but I don't really like them that much at all. And it's personal preference. You guys play, you know, Floodgate.deck with Card Demise and all that, do you? Um, but I'm just not really an avid fan of them, especially not this year. So starting off with traps, we have three copies of Yosinju Swords Sting. The card is a double compulsory. You reveal two Yosinjus of different names to bounce up to two cards that your opponent controls. It is hard ones per turn, but it's, it says you can only activate one per turn. So if your opponent negates it, you just activate another one. Um, so it's a really good card. It helps you to out-resource your opponent, keeps you in the game, it stops your opponent from killing you, and also it bypasses Colossus, it bypasses Titan, it doesn't care. It just puts them right back where they belong. In phase, bounce them back. And then this is a card that nobody plays in Yosinjus because why? The commas go back to your hand during the end phase. So they always think, I'm never going to control Yosinju for this to be live. Well, I play Pendulums. It's really easy to do. And also searching this and sending it, even if you don't want to Pendulum Summon or put anything on field, you have it set. So now next turn when you go aggro, you can have this to protect yourself. Think of it this way. This is the mindset you have to apply. It's like Galatea setting a crescendo on your opponent's turn. Even though it can't be activated, you can use it next turn to protect you. So if you have a secret move and you choose and you elect to not pin summon or leave a Yosinju on field, this is set. So now when you normal summon comma 1, your opponent like chains Widow Anchor. You can chain this in that chain and then resolve comma and then you get to drop another one. So it's really good. It can be used proactively, um, defensively, offensively. It's a very good aggressive card. It's an Omni Negate. It negates the activation of anything, and it's not hard once returned. You can easily set it up live just by pin summoning any Yosinji of your choice. It's really, really cool. I like it. Uh, I like it personally. And this is the spice nobody was ready for. No, nobody's playing this. I promise you no one is. Uh, three copies of Indulce Knights. Now, this card... Um, this, I only have one tea break, so this is, this is the spice I was telling you guys about. I was doing a lot of my research. How I f figure out all my techs and all my little spicy, um, you know, like, engine cards and my little splashable cards, the stuff that throws people off, I just research, and I normally do generic searches, and sometimes I find it in both. Um, but I, to play the knights and the tea break, I wish I had three, because I played three tea break, because you're going to see a lot of counter traps in this deck. This deck says no a lot. Um, so essentially, these cards are generic. Any deck can play them. That's all I'm saying. I don't, nobody plays them for one, and I don't know why anybody doesn't play them. Um, because the reason why I wasn't playing them before is because I just now um, discovered these through research. Um, but yeah, any deck can play these. You just have to have no monsters in your grave. So when a monster effect is activated, while you control no monsters in your grave, you negate the effect. They have secondary effects if you have put in tests, but I don't play Medulce's. T-Break does the same thing, except it negates the spell or trap. It's not as good because it returns it to the hand, but... Depending on the scenario, it's still a good card. It negates, you know, for example, like a uh, Twin Twister pay cost. Negate it. You can bounce your twin. Now you have to activate twin again and get rid of another card. Or, you know, card, stuff like that. Like, it's not as good, but still, I just like the fact that it is a negate for a Speller Trap. And it can stop cards that can hurt you. Um, so it's a card that I want to play at 3 as well. And the only stipulation is to control no monsters in your grave. Luckily for your Sinjus, unless my opponent Solemn Judgments, my Normal Summon, or I Link Summon. 
Um, my Yosinjus will always continually go back to my hand, so I'll never really put them in grave. And I also play this focused on the main deck. Literally, this is my extra deck. Three cards. I barely go into it at all. In fact, I hardly ever do. I play it mostly main deck, and my Yosinjus always go back to my hand. I haven't had an issue where they go to the grave unless I force them there or something awkward happened where my normal summon got negated. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy it. This card's always live. Um, it's just an, a negation for monster effects, which really helps you out a lot. This is an Omni Negate. This is Monster Negate. This is a Spell of Trap Negate. This is my spice, and it's mine. I didn't get the idea from anyone. I never get my ideas from anyone, ever. Uh, we also have three copies of Judgment. Uh, Judgment is insane. Obviously, you know, it's a three of it. Pretty much um, any deck that plays a lot of traps or wants to play back row, this is one of the best traps you can play. It's one of the best traps in the game. It was that one for so long for a reason. And I also play Triple Strike. My Pendulum matchup's pretty good if I get to go first. And then we have one copy of Warning. So we have the seven Solemns. You've got your, um, so like I was saying, the deck says no a lot. Um, so you've got Secret Move to say no, Madolce Knight to say no, Judgments to say no, Tea Break to say no, Strike and Warning to say no. They're counter traps. That's what makes them so powerful because the only thing that can respond to them is a card of the same spell speed. These are all spell speed threes. They just end Chain Link Wars when I'm trying to break boards because sometimes when I go second, people are just so greedy. Like Yu-Gi-Oh players are greedy. They like the flash and style on you. So Torrential paired with anything like a, a Strike or a Madolce Knight because this is a Monster Negator or a Secret Move. You know, anything like that, it just breaks the entire board. So it's super good. And like I said, it just ends Chain Link Wars. So, um, yeah, these cards are insane. Outside of the counter traps, I do also main 3 Torrential. This card is so slept on. It's been at 3 for a long time. And it still hasn't seen competitive play in quite a while. Um, it's Raigeki on your opponent's turn. So, yeah, that's a good card. Um, and your your commas go back to hand. All your Yosinjus go back to hand when they're normal. So you pretty much, you know, it doesn't hurt you. Sometimes I do normal, normal, and then use the additional normal for a Shinju L or R. Leave them on field. And um, even if they die, they go to the extra deck because they're pendulums. Something else that's really cool that this deck can do that I just want to go ahead and point out before I talk about the rest of the deck, you guys know what Lost Wind does, is that L and R have kind of like a dupe lock where you can, if you get multiple of like R or L, it, it's kind of like this weird lock. So like, for example, L says your opponent can't target your Sindri monsters or card effects except this one. But it's just like Marauding Captain and Doofrock. So if you have double L, nothing on your field can be targeted ever for the rest of the duel until they get rid of those two L's. And when you have double R, nobody can ever declare an attack on any of juice Because they say, like, nothing can attack this except this, but when you have two, it's like dupe. Because it says except this card. When you have another, it just, they overlap. Like I said, it's like dupe frog um, and the L. So, like, this deck has cool little locks that you can do when you're trying to grind against strikers. Like, I've thought about it before. Like, if I ever played strikers, I'm like, it's possible it could come up where I could just pin some in two L's. And now for the rest of the duel, they can't Widow Anchor or Afterburner, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm very happy with that. Um, but yeah, Triple Loss Win, one of the best traps in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's so good to grind. It helps you going second. It helps you to go for damage pushes. The card can be used in damage step. It's insane. Um, and then I play 3 Crackdown, another reactive card. Really helps me going second. Um, you know, it's just it's a good trap for me personally. So yeah, that's all my traps. It's pretty insane. I know it's a lot of traps. Like I said, I got a sword and shield. Uh, the Yosinjus are my sword, and the traps are my shield. The spells are just there to get me there. Now, the extra deck, even though I already showed you guys, it's literally these three cards. The rest of the extra deck could be a rank 4 toolbox, but I, when I say I have literally never made anything else except maybe Castell, I just don't know what to put in my extra deck right now because I don't want to put in cards just because, just to make it an extra deck. Because I could have done that, but what's the point of just making an extra deck just for presentation so you guys can see an extra deck? No, I want to have an extra deck of cards that I actually use, and right now these are literally all I use. I barely... Like I said, I barely, barely ever go on my extra deck. I win games on my main deck. I test this against my Herald. It does beat my Heralds because of freaking strikes. It's annoying. And the Medulce Knights. It gets really annoying. Uh, it does beat my Herald. It does really good against my Zephyr. It has bodied both of those decks before. It has beat my Necros. It has beat my Orcus. It's beat every one of my best decks. So it is a good list. So when I say this deck is good, understand I have tested it against my best deck. So yes, it is good. And no, I'm not making it up. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick little test hand for you guys before I end this video. Because, uh, you know, I just, I'm doing this so that nobody could try to troll and say, oh, I could build my house with all those bricks or something dumb like that. Like, you can't assume a deck's bricky before you even play it or, you know, before you've tried it out. Y'all ever heard the old school saying, don't knock it till you try it? That's like a real thing. And people always knock it before they try it. So I'm going to do a test hand just to make the non-believers a believer. And um, also, I hope that, I don't know your name, dude, I'm sorry. There's too many names for me to memorize. But I hope that you enjoy this deck list, man. This is um, for you specifically, whoever you are. Sorry, man, that I don't know your name. Please don't be offended. I try my hardest to not offend people, and it still happens sometimes. But yeah, I'll if, if you know, I'll check the comments and try to memorize your name for you. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get this test hand. So 
So we got Tea Break, Lost Wind, Tinky, Sword Sting, and Comma One. Uh, this is a good hand. This could go first or second. Um, I'd say activate the Tinky. I really, really like Comma Three. I just want to get it online. Um, but I'd say. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. So, like, naturally, you want to go for comma three because you know that it's going to be live. Or you can go for Sabu, or you can go for Izna just for draw. So, like, let's say, for example, you wanted to go for Izna just to draw. You can do that so every turn you get to draw a card. Because uh, the thing with comma three is you don't know if you're going to be able to inflict the battle damage to your opponent. But if you want to, you just literally go for comma three. There's a lot of options. You know, it's Tinky. It searches any of them. Um, so, you can go for three. And what I do is I never normal them and then try to use their effects to go back to um, in phase. Unless I open the Yosinju training grounds, that's the only time. But normally, you just don't even summon them. Set these and then pass. And then you've got Sword Sting, Lost Wind, Tea Break. So you've got Negate, Negate, and Double Bounce. That's enough to stop a turn. And that's really all I need is just to stop your turn. So it just depends what happens. But what you're going to top deck is a Secret Move. Um, secret Move is actually really nice. And how you can um, get it... <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's really good. <laughs> that's really, really good. That's a really good top deck, honestly. That's a, that's like, I don't want to just play it out turn after turn after turn after turn. But I will get one more test hand. That was a really strong opening. You got comma one and comma three, and you've got three really strong back rows that can really help you out against a lot of matchups. Tinky, L, Crackdown, R, and L. Oh, baby, let's go. So we Tinky. Since we're going in blind, okay, this is, I want to do this, I just want to do this just for fun. This is going to be a pure pendulum hand. Let's go for Sabu, normal Sabu, and we're going to search out Daibok. Then we're going to scale Shinju um, L. We're going to use Daibu to target the Shinju L. We're going to activate Whirlwind, and then after you, you shuffle it back, but I'm just going to shuffle it first and then activate Whirlwind. Whoops, wrong card. I wish he activated Training Ground. If he activated Training Grounds, that would actually be insane. Uh, so we're going to get my Whirlwind. And now we're like absolutely set for next turn to go like super aggro, which is really cool. Um, you just like that. It's unfortunate. I only drew one of my like 30 traps because the traps are there just to prevent my opponent from killing me. So you kind of have to use the Crackdown very um, reactive and at the same time defensive. I hate these mosquitoes, man. Welcome to Texas. Um, so yeah, the Crackdown's kind of the only card that's going to help you out. So that's unfortunate. So if they kill you, they kill you. But if they don't, it's a very high probability, especially with that top deck comma three, that you're going to kill them. Because you can flat just um, normal Sabu, uh, normal comma three, and then normal Sabu if they, don't, if they don't stop it. If they don't stop it, I understand what can happen. And you know, you'd get your L. And then you would go scale, scale. And uh, that, that's really there. Uh, and then you just pill on some of these two out, and you use die box effect, and you'd bounce. It returns up to two cards and just bounces them to hand. And then you've got comma three's effects gonna kick in because die box is a gigantic monster. Comma three can search you out your um, secret move because Shinju L will stay. It's not gonna go back. These get bounced, but this does not. So you have a live counter trap, and then Whirlwind will bounce another card. And uh, this also will protect this from being destroyed. And this says everything else can't be targeted. So when you pin some of those, like if you're playing Striker, for example, um, like if you're playing Striker, your hindsight play is to do this. And that's like a really good play. But if you're not playing Striker, then you might want to search out a different Shinju, like Shinju R, for example, you know, just like to stop them from attacking. But L is pretty good, too, because it says like the only thing that could be Widow Anchored is it. Um, but yeah, you guys, that's my Yosinju deck profile. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, don't, <laughs> don't, um... I guess don't knock 60 card Yosinjus until you try it. And also don't be me. Don't play the Yosin don't play the Madoche counter traps. <laughs> don't do it, bro. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I was almost scared to even share the spice. I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. This is like I want to top a YCS with with Madoche counter traps and have everybody bind them out. And they'd be like, oh my gosh. Who thought of that? <laughs> but thank you guys so much again. Peace out, yo. God bless you guys. Make good choices. Don't hurt your brain cells. Stay tuned for future content. And you guys definitely stay positive, all right? Peace.